let us begin with a moment of prayer. As we gather in this Eastertide, this season of resurrection, in this time where we mark the 125th anniversary of our diocesan church, in this time of pandemic where we've all suffered many losses, and where we've learned and seen and have had many things revealed to us. In this time when racism is so foremost in our minds. In this time of searching and questing for new life, renewed life, and a way forward that is Christ-like and hope-filled. Be with us, gracious God, as we gather now. Help us to feel your presence with us in the burning of our hearts, in the awakening of our minds, and in the possibilities that we will consider and dream for our beloved diocesan church. And these things we pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. So I am not going to talk for too long right now. Uh, this is a time for us to begin working. And I'm going to say some things which are very, very important to how we consider this work before us. If you have not yet had opportunity to listen to the sermon I preached on Easter Day, I encourage you to do so, not because it's a, a piece of theological brilliance, but because it speaks to where we're at at this time in our history as a diocesan church and how we might want to think about how we mark this 125th year in our lives. So I commend that to you. Tonight, I want to begin by affirming that parishes are where we experience church. Uh, we all belong to parishes. It's where we experience community and belonging, a sense of place. Parishes are where we are visibly and tangibly in communion with one another. Parishes are really important from the cradle to the grave, as they say. It's where we feel our community of faith in the most profound ways. And for that reason, parishes need to be healthy and sustainable and well-resourced. And every Anglican within the geographic boundaries of our diocese rightly can expect to belong to a parish and to receive the ministry of the church through a parish. Parishes are really, really important. Uh, it's where we live out our faith for the most part, where we're fed, and where we go from to serve Christ in the world. Now, parishes are, are critical to our life as an Anglican diocese, but parishes are not really our church. Our church is a diocesan church. In our Anglican tradition, our diocese is the church we all belong to. And it's helpful and actually very accurate in our tradition to see Christ at the head of our diocese and to see our diocese as a body, as a body that has two arms. And one of those arms is community ministry, how we together use our resources and our skill to reach out into our community in the form of ministries that serve those who live precariously or are marginalized or disenfranchised. The strength of our body allows us to have strong and growing community ministries. The other arm is parish ministry. Parish ministry is an equal arm in the body that is our diocesan church. And I want you to very much move into the place where you see yourself as part of that body. The work that we're about to do in many ways asks us to think as 
a diocesan church about our parish ministry as a whole. So in some ways, what you bring from your individual congregations and parishes is very important. But in another way, how we address the issue of the shape of our parish ministry is something that we must do as a diocesan church together. The shape of parish ministry is, I believe, our top priority as a church at this time. As there have been changes in population distribution, in the composition of our population, as there have been social and cultural changes, as secularism and pluralism and relativism have done their work, we have been changed. The shape of our parish ministry has been changed in many ways without our consent. Uh, there has been in the last 10, 15 years, about a 30% drop in the shape of our parish ministry. Uh, the structure has shrunk in a sense by about 30%. That was not planned. Uh, that happened and we reacted to what we saw happening up to this point. So I don't know about you, but I'm not fond of being shaped by change. Uh, not a good feeling to be, have your life shaped by other factors than you would choose. I would rather guide change, consciously guide change. And I hope and pray that you will join with me in guiding the changes we must make to the shape of our parish ministry at this time. Think of yourselves, think, let's think of ourselves as the generation who has been tasked to do this. Uh, other generations in the 125 years of our diocese and before that were tasked with building the structure, uh, the shape of parish ministry. And in many ways, we're still living from the vestiges of that structure. But we are the generation that has been a task to address fundamental issues in the shape of parish ministry. And as I said earlier, we must take on this task together as a diocesan church. The whole is much greater than the parts. The body is much stronger and more resilient than any of the parts, than either arm, and the body needs to take on this task. It's sometimes said in our tradition that the bishop belongs to every parish. And some clergy will know you never welcome a bishop to your parish because supposedly it's already the bishop's parish and, and the bishop is already home. So the bishop belongs to every parish, but it's also true that every parish belongs to the bishop. And that's not a personal statement. What it means is that every parish belongs to our diocese as it's represented in the office of bishop. So that as a diocesan church, as bishop, clergy and people working together, we are the generation to give shape to our parish ministry as a whole. Wherever you are, wherever you experience your own individual congregation or your own parish is very important but it's equally important that whether you're in Mattawa or Cornwall or Shawville on the corner of Bank and Cameron, uh, in Alta Vista, uh, in Winchester, wherever you are in a parish in this diocese, you have an equal interest in what's happening in every other parish in our diocese. In fact, I would go too far as to say that each of us have a say in the shape of parish ministry as it plays out across our diocesan church. We together as bishop, clergy and people must give new shape to our parish ministry, our parish ministry as a whole. We are the generation I firmly believe that has been tasked with this. It's time for us to fully implement the priority that we defined many years ago now to reshape parish ministry, to consider where our buildings are. We've been considering this for so long and we know it's a priority. Each of you in your own context in one way or another know how important it is 
to attend to the pressures and stresses that face our parish ministry. And so we must examine carefully together where we are now. And we must discern together where God is calling us to be, what shape our parish ministry will take, where we will have buildings. We are the generation that has been tasked with this, and every priest, every layperson, and certainly myself as bishop, along with every congregation, needs to contribute and be part of what happens next. And that is why you are here this evening. Parishes are where we visibly and tangibly are in communion with one another. It's where we experience belonging and a sense of place. And we, our generation, has certainly been called to bring new shape, new dreams, and new expressions of our parish ministry into being. And we begin that work tonight. We begin something that reflects the second priority our diocese has articulated for itself. The top priority is communications and lots of work is being done on that. The second priority we defined is the shape of parish ministry and where we have buildings. The third priority is engagement with the world. And our fourth priority may be termed lifelong discipleship. At this time, we must focus all our energy for a concerted uh, period of time on redefining, reshaping our parish ministry. And so this conversation and action that we're about to undertake will be facilitated by a team who has been working very hard to bring us to this point this evening. Anne-Marie Clysdale, a lay woman who is one of two co-chairs, is joined by the Reverend Dr. John Martin as the uh, leads on the group which will facilitate our conversation. The other members of the team are Anne Chaplin, Barbara Kanye, the Reverend Tim Kehoe, the Reverend Rhonda, Rhonda Waters, and Archdeacon Mark Whittle. They are the team that will facilitate our conversation to keep us on track, to keep us focused, working very closely with me over the next 18 months to bring us to the point where, God willing, you will tell me, because we have discerned together what the shape of our parish ministry is to look like and where we are to have buildings 